question for Unamde is, as a leader, exactly what official steps have you taken? Have you written an official letter to the government that you want to secede and the government said no? Who exactly have you been corresponding with in the Nigerian government? Who said no? Who said you cannot have your own country? Because I I was hoping I would see something like that before we resort to violence. But as it is, the guy is asking for guns to kill people. And I'm like, why are we talking about guns? We need guns and we need bullets. Yeah, that was him at the World Igbo Conference in California. I don't understand that. If you want to divorce somebody, you not know, they say you will go to court and file for divorce. Why guns? Eh? And why did he say that people in America are the ones to buy the guns? I heard him saying that the people in UK don't have anything. Is this true? So we need guns and we need bullets. And those of you in America will give it to us. If not those of you in America, who's going to do it? Is it those of us in Europe? We don't have anything. Uh -huh. So those of you that live in UK, you don't have anything. It is the Igbos in America that have money. Okay, I hear you. Also, I would like to ask him why he's been instigating violence. One time like this, he said that people should start burning churches in Igbo land, churches that are owned by Yoruba people. I'm like, why the violence? And not only that, here in the US, this is what he said. On the 22nd of this month, something will happen. It's called the Blood Moon. Most of you don't know that in 1967, before the war started, there was a Blood Moon as well. Are you aware of that? It comes once in a while. There was blood money in 67. There will be blood money this year. Why? Why? My brother, why? Why? Eh? Why? How do you say why in Igbo language? Again, oh, why? Why? Because the Rwandan genocide that killed about 800,000 people. You know that radio was also used as propaganda to instigate the violence. Is he trying to start another genocide? Then I saw the video released by his ex-girlfriend, that is Choma Amarilis. This woman raised some pressing issues about the integrity of Namdi. But instead of addressing the issues that she raised, a lot of people are calling her a prostitute. Again, when I see something like that, it gets my attention. <laughs> they said that she's upset that Namdi did not marry her. Now, it gets my attention because, you know, they call me a prostitute too. I said she must be saying something that is too much for them to deal with. Apparently when some Nigerian men cannot take the truth coming from a woman, their easiest excuse is to call her a harlot. <laughs> I'm used to that. But if people are willing to die for this man, the director, I think it's proper to look at some of the issues raised by this woman. First of all, she said that Namde is not accountable to anybody regarding the money donated to Radio Biafra. Is this true? One person is the leader, is the director. Is the financial consultant, is the money holder. Let's just call it money holder. One person is in control of the money. Okay, so if that is true, I have a problem with it because I know that Radio Biafra solicits for money. Uh, on their website, they take all currencies and people are donating. In fact, I heard that there was a time that the director asked for $8 million to launch the attack against Nigeria. According to him, in 2014, he needed $8 million. Um, dollars to start the, the the initial whatever that needed to happen in Nigeria. So how do we know that all the money that he's been raising were used justly if there is no accountability? Again, a lot of people will abuse me for talking about this, but if you've donated your hard-earned money, if you are like me working day and night, night and day, are you not concerned in finding out what your money is being used for? Where are the weapons that he promised to buy? Has he used this money to better the lives of people in Igbo land? Apparently, he promised to start a TV station. Where is it? Again, I'm raising these issues because I want answers. Uh, uh, so if you have answers, please don't hesitate because I can't imagine that he's living large in UK at the expense of donors. Now, the lady also pointed out that Ojuku in 1957 spent his father's money. Um, I know that he spent millions of pounds, but she said he spent like $250 million. Ojuku spent um, $250 million of his parents, uh, of his dad's money. Is this true? In 1957, like I said, though, I really don't know anything. The other thing is, is it true that the director, Namdi, is a dual citizen and he's still traveling with his Nigerian passport? Namdi has dual citizenship. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Doesn't he call Nigeria a zoo? So he's carrying the passport of a zoo? Eh? Meanwhile, some of his followers are carrying their Nigerian passport on YouTube. The country is not Nigeria. country is the country. is the country. The country is the country. This is it. I refuse to be associated with anything 
anything called Nigeria. So I personally believe that this guy tore an expired passport. I don't believe that he would tear his legitimate passport. But I didn't expect the director to have a Nigerian passport, which he calls the zoo. And I also don't expect him to live in the UK because he's always abusing UK for making Igbo land a part of Nigeria. You know, the colonial masters. Yet he's living there and he probably has a UK passport as well. He travels on a British passport. So it, to me, if I'm traveling on an American passport and I'm telling somebody in Nigeria to be ready or something or to go out in the street to demonstrate, I have to at least tell them the whole truth. So I'm a little bit confused, you know, you're not really walking the talk. And then this lady said something that surprised me. For a long time I've had Namdi on Radio Biafra talk about how 88 countries are backing Biafra as well as the United Nations. But this is what she said. What it means to be in 88 countries, it's not really 88 countries but that's besides the point. But in 88 countries there is at least a group of people or maybe one person who has registered IPOP. has nothing to do with the nation supporting the movement. I see, I see. So they have members in those countries. It's not as if the government of those countries are backing them up. Is this true? Because a lot of people are getting themselves in trouble thinking that 88 countries will come and defend them and build them out. They thought that the United Nations would rescue them. In fact, when he himself was arrested, I personally was expecting the UN and 88 countries to come to his rescue. I didn't hear anything. I was a little bit surprised by that because Okay, never mind. So not only that, the protesters that have been arrested, exactly what did he do to get them out even before he was arrested? According to this lady, it's also a lie when he says that Ijo people are behind him, the Niger Deltans, and so on and so forth. So it's either she's lying or Unamdi is lying. Again, me, I'm just looking for answers. If you have one, please write it in the comments. Her last statement is exactly my first point. So let's ask a separate question. Who did we ask? Who has IPOP, the Lady Biafra, contacted in the Nigerian government and said, we want to be free, and they said, you cannot be free? Yeah, exactly who have they contacted to be free? Who is telling them they cannot have their own country? Why are they now instigating violence? This is not a laughing matter because a lot of people will call Radio Biafra from Nigeria. They will tell uh, the director they, they, they already have a gun hidden. They're just waiting for his signal. And a lot of people are willing to give their lives. People are ready to die because of this. So we need to know what we are dying for. If any of these issues that this lady raised are not true and you have evidence, please let me know and we will talk about it. Let's talk about the issues raised instead of calling her a prostitute.